Hey everyone, welcome to the main event. Today is Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. I'd like to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, today is a special show, uh, which I'll get into why here in just a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let me know in the chat room. Can you uh, can you hear me clearly? Is everything good? My my s levels seem a bit loud on my end. Um, give me a thumbs up or some sort of confirmation in the chat room that you can hear me. Uh, please click that. Waiting, waiting. Someone, there we go. Uh, loud and clear. All right. Thank you, Nico. Appreciate that. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for joining us here on uh, the Hair Transplant Channel. Uh, like I said, it's Tuesday, October 3rd, 2023. And if you're new to the channel, don't know who I am, what I'm doing behind this microphone in front of this camera. My name is Joe Tillman, and I don't want to say I'm an influencer. Some people would say I am. Um, but I've been in the hair transplant, hair restoration, hair loss industry for 20 years. And I'm not bragging, just saying that's my experience because it's nothing to brag about, to be honest with you. Uh, there's so much, there's so much, um, so much terrible, terrible, uh, behavior and, uh, you know, people taking advantage of patients and snake oil and just so much nasty, nasty stuff in this industry. My job as it, as it were, is to educate you on what to look out for, what to know when you're going into the realm of hair restoration surgery and even hair loss in general, because there's so many, uh, so much misinformation out there. Uh, I got my start as a repair patient, surgical repair patient, 31 years ago. When I was very young, I had not one, but two bad hair transplants, knew nothing about medication, finasteride, Propecia, Proscar wasn't really a thing. Hadn't really permeated the, uh, the the culture of young men at the time. Rogaine was out for a while, but I didn't really know about it because we didn't really have the internet. All we had was our doctor to be honest with us and tell us what's best for us. Nine years later, after I lost all my hair, except for my hair transplant uh, results, which looked terrible, very pluggy. Um, I think I've coined the phrase they look like ant legs on growth hormone because that's pretty much what they look like. I got my first repair surgery with Dr. Jerry Wong of Hassan Wong, and that changed my life. I became an online advocate for education and truth about the differences in, in procedures and techniques and, you know, who's bullshitting you, who's not bullshitting you. And that was just as a patient. A year and a half later, I started working for the clinic that basically turned my life around. And for the next 11 years, I worked for them. And then I worked for another clinic. And then I struck out on my own, doing what I do now, educating you and educating doctors, actually. Um, I've had several doctors come up to me at conferences and, and such and tell me that they have learned from me. I was actually telling the story earlier today to a colleague how a doctor in, in Korea – Funny, funny tie-in to, to today's show. A doctor in Korea approached me last year at a conference in Europe, and he told me, he said, I was really mad at you when I first learned about who you were. I was like, why? He said, because you made a video about hairlines and bad hairlines, what they look like, and you used one of my hairlines. I was like, oh, my God. And he goes, and I was so angry at you, Korean doctor. He goes, I was really angry at you. I was like, I'm, I'm really sorry, but you know, I, I, I didn't know it was you. Like I didn't target anyone in, uh, in particular as far as a doctor or a clinic goes. I was just showing results I thought looked pluggy. He goes, well, you know what? You were right. I, after I calmed down, I looked at it and I listened to it again, and you were right. My hairlines were pluggy, and ever since then, I've worked hard to improve. I want, I want your opinion. And he, he pulled his phone out. He started showing me, and good-looking hairlines, good-looking hairlines. And, um, and that kind of segues into today's episode. Um, five years ago, when I made that video, I focused at the end of that video on a particular individual in the U.K., that was the inspiration for the video in general. 
His name is Kyle Christie. And at the time, well, I'll let him tell the story. Let me see if I can uh, bring Mr. Kyle Christie up on the screen. Kyle, how you doing? How you doing, Joe? You good? I'm good, but, but man, how are, how are you? Yeah, I'm really good. Right really on. good. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And thank, thanks, for, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, this is a long time coming, my friend. This is, we, we've tried to do this in the past. Uh, we did have a follow-up mm -hmm. video at one point to, uh, to what we were doing, uh, but we had terrible audio and I, I had to take that down. But I think the timing is right today in 2023 um, because you've, you've been actually approaching me to say, I want to come on and tell my story. So let's do that. Let's talk about it. Why don't you, uh, first off, why don't you talk about the video that I first made uh, that I was just talking about? How'd you find out about that? What, what, um, tell, tell your side of the story from back then, five years ago. Um, so I first got tagged in the video by one of my fans who follows us. And um, eventually I took note of it and I was like, Shit, Shit, I, this, this guy, guy, this guy is right because right, I could I see, see certain stuff, stuff in my in my, my hairline, hairline which, which didn't look right. right. It, it looked it looked, it looked very pluggy, yeah, very unnatural, and, and it, it just, just didn't, didn't look, look for me right. right. Um, and it was, it was too straight, straight. And, and it, it just, just it just just didn't look a hundred percent. And that's when um, instead of like denying the video, and instead of like coming after you on social media and saying, "Oh God, I'm going to take this guy down for what he's saying," <laughs> I took it on board what you were saying. I was like, "Yeah, man, I agree with you. Can you help me?" Yeah, because because at the end of the video, I actually said, "And Kyle, if you're watching this, call me, call me, page me, you know, whatever." And you did. And I did. I got, I got the <laughs> message. I, I don't know if it was Instagram or, or, or an email. I think it might have been an email. I was like, son of a bitch? That's Kyle Christie. <laughs> 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 it, just, it blew my mind, man. I've never, never had uh, anyone reach out to me like that um, uh, up to that point. So, yeah. Well, I'm the first one, I'll admit, when I, I ran into, into it too early. early. I, was, I, was, I was too young. young. And, and I just, just didn't shop around, and, and I just, just went, went for the, 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 the free deal type, type thing. Um, and and, and I, I mean, I regret it, but then I've paid for it, and I'm just happy that you've helped me out now, and I've got the hairline to where I want it to be. Yeah. Not well. You still got you still got a little more work you want to do, right? Like there's some yeah, yeah. some improvements that you're looking for uh, because it, it's it's near impossible to to take what you had been through and reverse it in one or even two surgeries um, for, for that degree of, of repair. Um, I, but I, I tell most people, if you have some sort of hairline work done that's too low or, or, or too pluggy, or in, in many cases like, like your own, both too low, too pluggy, uh, it's definitely two surgeries minimum across the board. Uh, I've never seen a case. Yeah, so, so I did. I did two yeah. surgeries, and they were only like three months apart. But I mean, um, the doctor who did my surgery, Doctor Luke Panzula, he was perfect. He was absolutely. He was great. Yeah, and I couldn't have had a more better experience. Right, and and that's and that, and just you know, full disclosure. Um, you know, I I don't work with Doctor Luke Panzula any any longer, but he deserves the credit for what he's done for Kyle up to this point. Kyle wants to move forward, uh, and he is looking for a, a, another doctor, which, which he and I will be uh, discussing um, at, at, a, at a future point. But all credit where it's due. And Dr. Uh, Emrain Lupinzula out of, the, um, uh, out of Brussels did a fantastic job on you, really did. And I'm, I'm very, very happy yeah, you yeah. had a, a part in that to, to put you guys together. I think it was a great pairing. So um, I'm just going to throw a couple, a couple of pictures up here. Uh, this, is, this is Kyle. Uh, that was from, I think that was the challenge. I think when you're still doing the challenge, one of the early Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. 
and then no, um, it's not, not great, great. Is it? no no i mean it's i, for, I forget how like uh, what, what, what it was, was like. like yeah well here you go here, here's something else to to remind you <laughs> 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 that was uh yeah that's that's the one that's one of the images that actually uh got my attention and was the inspiration for i if i remember correctly for the video in the first place because this image right here like how long has it been since you've seen this image uh, oh yes now how, 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 how long, long has it been since i've got my procedures five, five years about five, five years five, five yeah, years yeah. since uh since i did that video at least that was uh actually was it five years no wait that was um i think it was long i think it was six years about six years ago yeah, yeah it, was it was 2018, 2018 I got correct correct surgery. Surgery. right right that's right yeah so this was before then this was about two years before a uh, year and a half, two mm-hmm. years, something like that. But the the work here, like I, I still look at this, Kyle, and it is still something that is, I won't say unrivaled as far as how terrible it is, but I've not seen a lot of work since I made this video that rivals what you went through. And I'm really sorry that you had to go through this. It was... Um, like I felt bad for you when I first saw this, and then uh, and and then subsequently. But I, I want to throw another picture up here. I want you to explain it to the to to the crowd. Um, I remember this. I, I remember you went through a phase where you're wearing these um, uh, these bandanas a lot. This is when you're doing multiple, at least through two or three seasons of of the challenge. And for people uh, watching, uh, Kyle. Uh, has been on a lot of different TV shows. I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, rattle those off real quick. Uh, let's see, where is it? He was on um, uh, several shows there in the UK. Uh, Jordy Shore. Uh, Jordy Shore is uh, one of the one of the big ones. Uh, how, how many seasons were you on Jordy Shore? Uh, well, I've, I've done, eight done eight seasons all together, and we're still, still doing, doing that now. now. Oh, you're still doing that? Okay, yeah. And then yeah. On, and it's, then, like it's like an old person's Jordy show now. now. It's like, like a reunion <laughs> show. <laughs> an old person's show. Like, like Jersey, Jersey Shore, the vacation. Yeah, it's still yeah, like, like that. that. Yeah. So, so what I see here is you got Jordy Shore uh, since 2011. You got Jordy Shore Big Birthday, Car Crash Couples, uh, The Challenge. Uh, you've been on for at, at least seven seasons, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been, been seven, seven seasons, seasons now. now. Celebrity Showmance, Jordy Shore, The Journey. Reunion, like a, a bunch of stuff, uh, basically with Viacom and MTV uh, UK. Is that right? It's all it's all with Viacom. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what that's we're right. So and now, now it's, it's like, like Paramount Plus. Plus. That's oh, we're right. oh yeah, right, right, right. So I remember I remember noticing your bandana phase. Can you can you explain the uh, the bandana phase to everyone? Um. So the bandana phase was because I had very thick hair, like, like donut, donut parts, parts and stuff, stuff like that, that in the back, back of my hair. hair. So, so it was very, very thick, so, so if I just put a band, 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 band over my hairline here, because yeah. Yeah. my hairline was about here at the time, it was like really low. If I, the bandana would cover it, and then this would just come over the top. Right. Or go back. Sorry, Kyle, hold on one second. I actually, my uh, laptop's about to die on the battery. I got, I got to get a power supply, so I'm going to... Uh, no problem. I'm going to put this... Uh, I'm going to put this uh, screen back up and some music. Everyone will be right back.
Okay, thanks for holding on there, everyone. My, <laughs> I didn't realize my, my uh, laptop was about to die on me here. Um, I got it down. To, I got it at three percent. I was able to get my my power cord. <laughs> uh, my laptop's running my phone system, so that's that's why that's a big deal. So let me get uh, let me get Kyle back up here. All right, Kyle, we're back on. And um, someone in the chat room said that there was an echo as well. Let me just double check this um, for for you. So let me just. Uh, oh, there's an echo for me. That's that's what they're saying. So I just want to check this out. Um, for, for you. I'll I'll go get my headphones. I'll be two seconds. Echo for me. Yeah, I hear it. I hear it. Right. Okay. So th thanks in the uh, chat room for letting me know that it's it's hard to I can't monitor everything at once while while I'm live since I'm a one man operation. So it is difficult to hear that. Um, might be a setting on my end, but we'll figure it out. Uh, if you're just joining us, we've got Kyle Christie live from the UK and um, from his home, and we're talking about his experience with hair restoration surgery, past, present, and we'll even be talking about the future uh, with regards to his plans because he's not done quite yet. Yes, I know Hair Loss Podcast, it's the Mix Minus, uh, but everything's been set for the Mix Minus, so I'm not sure what to do. I think it's a setting in my software, actually. Um, so once he comes back, we'll be able to test that out. But yeah, if you're just joining us, uh, Kyle Christie, he's just gone off to get his headphones so that... Um, he can, is it because my um, voice is coming through your speakers, Joe? No, it's um, it's, that's good point, good point. But it's it's more of a it, it's not coming th from here because I I've got these earbuds on. Let's see if we can get this uh, going uh, here. Just joining us. Hold on, just one second. Okay. Give me a check one two three, please, Kyle. Check. check. One, two, three. Okay. Let's see what it says here on or what it sounds like. Little bit of an echo. Yeah, a little bit of an echo. Um, let me just double check one thing on this side. I think this might ah, I think I know what's gonna happen. Cause uh, I think I had this problem before. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Okay, give me another check one, two, three, please. Check. One, two, Kyle, three. Can give me another one. Check one, two, three. Ah, that does not work. Okay, hold on. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Okay, we'll just have to push through on this one. It's it's a it's a mild echo. It's not too bad. Um, go ahead and continue uh, where where you left off. You're talking about the um, uh, where, oh, I was asking about your seasons on the challenge and the headband phase that you're going through. Uh, you're you're explaining that. Yeah, so the headband phase was a part of like just hiding it. Um, and obviously, I was on TV and I was on TV every single day when I was on the challenge. And I knew what it looked like, I knew how bad it was at the time. So I just used the headband to cover it basically. And it, it worked pretty well, to be fair. Yeah. And I'm not the only one that does that. There's a lot of guys in there that do that. And they do it for the same reason. Yeah. Yeah. Really? I didn't realize that. Um, but uh, it's, it's quite a TV, TV thing, thing because you can't you can't like style your hair all the time in a certain fashion to like. Hide. So a lot of people on TV will do that, especially reality TV shows. Right, right. Well, it makes a lot of sense. Um, like this is like it's it for number one, it suited you. Like it, it was a good look, is a is a good signature look for you at the time. Um, and then I remember uh, seeing some other photos of you. With the surgery, uh, you can see the hairline there. How broad and um, and and low it is there in the corners, uh, and then what I've what I've learned about them pictures, right? It's so easy to edit anything like that. You have to do the, do you know the videos that you get your surgeons whoever works with you mm -hmm. to post. That's how you know the good or not. Yeah. Yeah, that's that, that's. It's like there's a, there's yeah, a surgeon um, called, called Manny who works with you, with you mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm I'm a big, big fan, fan of his. Yeah, because he does the videos where he pulls through your hair like that. Right, right. Um, and you can tell how good his work is. Yeah, if 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 you were to if you were to do that with uh, with this image, back when your hair looked like this, that would be yeah. Uh, that would be a disaster for whatever doctor decided to 
to to highlight this result with video. And that's one of the things exactly. that highlights the good doctors from the bad is being able to show the details with not just video, but but ultra HD 4K video. That's that's one of the things I've been pushing for as a standard because it really does set uh, clinics apart to where you know patients actually if they actually care then they'll be able to see the difference. So um, the good news is very proud of you, my friend. Uh, you know, you, the, the hair looks so much better right now. Those temples were brought up. Uh, a lot of those offending grafts were, were taken out. And um, I'd like to say congratulations to you on your new engagement to this lovely, yeah. lovely young lady, the mother of your child. Oh, thank, um, you thank you so, so much. much. I appreciate it. I'm really happy for you. Um, like your, your life is going swimmingly, as I say. Uh, so I just want to say congratulations and really happy for you. So well done. Uh, absolutely well done. Let's, uh, let's get this back up here. There we go. So what, what's, well, first off, when you had your repair with Dr. Uh, Lopenzula, what was that like? Like what, what did, tell everyone what Dr. Lopenzula did uh, the, the, the type of procedure, what was involved, and your thoughts about the procedure before, during, and after. So, um, I, it, was, it was more like you explained how people had gone wrong in the past about, about my hairline, and it was um, the single hairs. Mm -hmm. So you've got to put the single hairs across the front, or just in the back, yeah, and then... You can, you can do, do density, density by putting thick hairs. Obviously, you, you're, 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 you're a professional, professional and, and everyone else who, most people who watch this channel are, so they, so they know, know what I'm talking, talking about here. Yeah. I wouldn't say most that watch it are, but <laughs> a lot of people that, that watch <laughs> this are, are learning these types of things for sure. Uh, yeah. So, they're, so they're, they're pretty aware of what's going on. I, actually, that video I made about, or that included you in it, that particular video helped to reset the knowledge base about how hairlines are supposed to be uh, constructed, how they're supposed to look, because and I didn't even realize this, realize this at the time, the idea of single hair grafts in the hairline, that was common knowledge in the mid-2000s, but as FUE became more popular and more uh, amateur clinics started opening up worldwide, that knowledge was not something that they had picked up because they'd never had any formal training. The, these, these clinics, a lot of these doctors uh, are plastic surgeons that never had any formal training with any other uh, hair restoration yeah. specialist um, to, to understand these basics. And what's interesting is after I released that video, I actually had, uh, I, I saw doctors start to advertise in, in, on their website and in some of their uh, social media that they're using stereoscopic dissecting microscopes to make sure that you have singles in the hairline. No one was doing that before this video. No one. I saw some clinics start to invest in these microscopes and start to, uh, in fact, well, I won't say who, but a fairly well-known clinic at the time, people didn't realize this. The clinic didn't realize this. They made the investment and integrated it into their, into their clinic, and they're even better now than they've ever been. They're always, always really good clinic. They just didn't realize this detail. And, and I just I think, think everyone, everyone should be held to a certain standard, standard and, and um, there, there should, should be like a board of people, people who, who, who come down and say, yes, yes, you're allowed to do it this way, you're allowed to do it that way. There should be rules. Yeah. Well, I, I agree. There should be rules, but... You know, it, it's interesting you say that. There's there's a doctor out there right now that's saying there should be rules, there should be standards. Um, but the problem is he feels like he should be the arbiter of <laughs> standards and rules when uh, when he's he's the last person that should be in charge of this. Uh, the idea that oh, really? the, the idea of doctors uh, being in charge of their own standards is a pretty dangerous proposition in my view because it's doctors that have gotten us into this position to begin with. We need people uh, that, that are not vested uh, in bringing in patients to actually be the, um, I, I would say, the, the gatekeepers to what's good and what's not. That's just the way I look at it. Um, but anyway, con sorry, con continue your, your, uh, your story, your experience. Um, so yeah, I first noticed there was something wrong and it was a bit unnatural. 
So that's, that's when, when I got, I got in, touch in touch with you, you. Mm-hmm. and uh, you, you put, put me in touch with Dr. Luke Pandula, and, and then he, he, he did two procedures, procedures and I couldn't have been happier. happier. Obviously, Obviously, I'm still, there is still like, so the, the hairline's absolutely fine now. It's, 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 it's great, but it's obviously losing a little bit from behind there. Mm-hmm. And I still will need another one one day, I'm assuming. But, but uh, for the time being, it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Now, another consequence of your first surgery before you had it repaired. Um, well, let me just segue into the question of can you tell me about the ink, the tattoo that you had on the back of your scalp and why? Oh, so I've got a tattoo on the back of my scalp. Yeah. And that is um, because there was too much donor hair taken. And um, from there, I'm, 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 I'm well, I, when I seen it, I didn't notice it at first because I grew my hair out after I had my tra- hair transplant. Mm-hmm. And so I never seen the donor hair. But then when, when I, I shaved, shaved it off, then I seen that, that the, there was there was there was like missing hairs on the back. Mm-hmm. Um, like I'd been harvested too much, and, and that's, that's when I decided to get the tattoo on the back of my head. And it it, it, it does cover it, but not, not everyone can do this, this because, because I'm covered in tattoos. I've got them everywhere, so a tattoo on the back of my head isn't that much of like a wow. You've got a tattoo on your head. Yeah. Yeah, it, it blends. But it, it, for me, it's easy, easy. But for everyone else, for the, the standard, standard normal guy, it's it's, yeah, it's not, not a good. It 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 draws uh, more like questions a, than 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 it sol- than it answers, I guess. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. So, what's the situation today? Like you you had your your first surgery, uh, then you had to have it repaired. Um, what's going on now? What's uh, like, like, like the first clinic. What's going on with that clinic? Um, the first one I ever went to. Yeah. Um, so they kept on using my face as a prom- promotion, and I wasn't happy about it. I told them to take it down repeatedly, and they wouldn't. And now we're just going back and forward with it, and uh, I'm diving into it too deep. Right. Understandable. Um, but basically, I'm not happy about it. Because, because there, there is, is other people, people out there who are still going there, there and I just, I, I, I feel bad because I, I meet certain people, people and they come up to me and they, and they say like, oh, I went to the same place as you, you and that makes me feel guilty, guilty. you know? Yeah. Expound on that. Like, like, tell me, tell me, uh, like, do you have any stories that you can share? So there was a, there was a guy that uh, came up to me at the bar and said, I've been to this place, the same place as you've been. But, but I, didn't I didn't dive into, into it too much. much. I didn't look where you'd been to get your stick stuff. And he didn't do his research on it. And he just went to the first place I went. And then, like, I just, it looked exactly like my old hairline. I just felt really guilty over it. I felt really upset. I get it. I'm, I'm sorry you had to you had to go through that. I'm sorry I'm sorry for the, the other patients, obviously. But I'm sorry that you are being haunted by this. Because I'm sure, I'm sure you'd love to put that part of your life behind you. Um, you know, everything is going great for you now. Uh, you know, as, as we've seen with uh, some of the photos, and you're you're continuing your your career. Um, it, se- it seems like it's just getting better. Uh, you're branching out into other things as well. Congratulations on those. Um, but to see to see people or to have people come up to you and say that they went to the first place because of you or because there's some sort of uh, relationship to their decision and seeing you having done the same thing, uh, that's got to feel, that's got to be a kick in the gut. Um, so Yeah, yeah it, it really does. does. I, I hope this gets resolved. And I, I get a lot of people of coming to and, and I've got all them stored up and I have, have to put, put them in the right, right direction because there's a lot of people message me. me. Yeah. About, about not, not just about, about the first place, place I went, but like, like any, any any like hairline in general that, that looks similar to my first hair transplant. And I get I everyone asking me about repairs because mm-hmm. they know I've had mine repaired now. now. Right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I I think that you're you're in a unique position now, uh, moving forward. You know, you're you're still you're still dealing with the past. 
you've got questions about what you want to do and where you want to do it uh, for the future, which which I think is great. Um, you know, we can continue to talk about that behind the scenes. But there's the there's the opportunity that you have as someone that's more in the public eye than than I am. Like I'm I'm not you know I'm not that well. Say I, I I am like. I am involuntary, involuntary an ambassador, ambassador for hair transplants, transplants now. now. Everyone, Everyone knows I've had one. <laughs> and my, my hair transplant, transplant is actually more famous, famous than me. me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's terrible to laugh at, but at the same time, it's it's hilarious. It's so bad, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I get, I get people, people contact, contact me all the time, and they don't even know what, what I do, and then they just contact, contact me over the fact that they know I'm a guy in the public eye and had a hair transplant. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, it puts you in a position of of creating positive change or the potential to create positive change. Um, so, what would you what would you recommend people do as far as uh, starting their own journey with regards to finding out what the what the answers are for them? Um, what I would do is there is a few. Th- th- Few, few people, people in the, the UK, UK now that are up with that, that standard, standard of, of, of um, Dr. Lulu Panzerlo, Panzerlo, which I think even the, 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 I, I, I follow a few of them on social, social media. media. Mm-hmm. It's normally the ones that are like any ones, ones that, that you follow or like work, work with you because I know you hold them to a certain standard, standard don't you? Yeah. Yeah. And that's how I normally get the information. I, 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 I like I follow them like a fan now. Like I look at their work and like I nod along with it. I'm like, yeah, they've done an amazing job there, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I know it's the uh, IAHRS, that's, that's what, what you run, isn't it? And if, if, if they're involved with that, that and it's, it's normally a good, good sign. sign. Well, the, the, just for clarification, IAHRS, the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons, is a separate organization uh, than what I'm, I'm working with, which is uh, hairtransplantmentor.com. But the – and just, just for everyone watching, that is one of the standards that I have – for membership in my organization because I believe in in having levels of standards to get to a certain point where everything works um, to complement each other. So so when I'm looking at a doctor that has has applied for membership with me, I, I look at you know a, a bunch of things that everyone looks at. I look at the photos, I look at the videos if they have them. But uh, among other things, I, I do dive in deep into a lot of the details. On, on how they like I, I have like sheets of questions that I ask that have to do with how they run their clinic, uh, clinical standards as far as their uh, local governing bodies are concerned. Um, you know I ask for copies of inspection reports, things like that. But one of the other things is I do want them to be a member of the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons because that's that's one of the highest standards out there. So if they, if they meet that standard, that actually does part of the work for me so that I know I can move forward and consider them for membership on my website. So, but that is a safe place to start. The International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons, it's not a list of the best. No one says that they're the ab- absolute best in the world, but there's a certain mentality that, or uh, I won't say mentality, but there's a certain approach to hair restoration that, um, I like to think that they all share to some degree. Of it, it should be held with a certain standard of the fact, fact that you don't know, know you've, you've had, had a hair transplant. transplant. That's, well, you know, that, that's, that, that's, that's, that's a good way of putting it. And that's, that's the way I hold it. If, I, if, if I'm, I'm the guy and he said, I've had a hair transplant, and, and, and I look at it and I'm like, have you? That's the type of level that doctors and surgeons should be at. No, I, I agree. Well, that's that's one of the things I, I look at that, you know, the the final result, is it something that would stand out as a, as a hair transplant uh, or does it look natural? That's ultimately what really matters. Um, but, you know, it's uh, it's more and more rare to find that, or at least it was. I, I'm, I'm hopeful for the future because I am seeing, um, like, like I got applications from several clinics right now that I'm, I'm looking at that gives me hope for for the future of the field and for patients. Um, not all the cl- not all the applications I get are 
members of the IAHRS. Uh, you know, I, I, I see lots of applications from different clinics, um, and it's, it's, it's nice to see that where there are clinics I've not even heard of before, or I'll say doctors I've not heard of before, that are coming up uh, into their own, as it were, and getting much better with the details. So um, you, you have learned this through trial by fire, as it were, and um, yeah, you know, you'll, yeah, yeah, say that. you you you're you're getting to the point where you can talk about this, and you know what you're talking about. Um, you can you can help guide people in the right direction. Um, so yeah, you are an un, unwitting uh, ambassador of sorts for the industry. So uh, I will I will call upon you. And in your on your Instagram channel of or your Instagram uh, account of 1.2 million followers to steer people in the right direction. I think I think yeah. would go I, have, I have been, but I've only been doing it behind the scenes, scenes when people message me. me. Yeah, I, I, I am the most open person in the world when it comes to like my messages and stuff. I have put everyone in the right direction of where to go because I am voluntarily quite like a. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say, say an, I wouldn't say an expert, expert, but I'm an ambassador. Yeah, for it. Yeah, I, I, I think you, you have the potential to be a great ambassador for it. So, uh, I'm going to challenge you here in front of everyone to step up and and uh, share online. Uh, you know the the resources that people need to know to get the right education. And uh, so I'll be I'll be watching you on that. All right. So um, in the meantime, I'm, I'm going to let everyone know that the phone lines are open. If you have any questions, you may not, but if you have any questions for Kyle Christie and his experience with surgical hair restoration over the past several years, uh, the number is right down here, right below Kyle, right over, wait, right over there. <laughs> down right in front of you, below your chin. Uh, the number is one 533 or excuse me, 563 Four two four seven. You can give us a call. I did test the phones early. It should work to where the caller can hear what Kyle will be saying. Uh, hopefully, it'll still work if someone uh, uh, wants to give us a call. It's one eight three three five six three four two four seven, and it is available uh, as a number in the UK. Um, if you're using a calling app of some sort, not sure how that works. I am. I am working on getting a UK number for everyone that's been asking about that. Uh, that is um, that is coming along shortly. Um, in the meantime, uh, while we're waiting for a call, Kyle, uh, what what is the actual message that you would like to get out to people as far as what their first steps should be if they're considering hair restoration surgery? What's the first thing that you would tell them? Uh, would you say hair restoration surgery, or just people that want hair transplants in general? Yeah. Well, Do you mean you like, like? Yeah, the same thing. I mean, hair transplants, hair restoration surgery. Um, what would you? What would be the first thing that you tell them to do uh, to educate themselves? Uh, I would say, don't, don't go, go with, with the, the cheapest, cheapest person. person. That's good. Um, research their work, and the, the main, main thing, thing is, is Joe, what, what you do, which massively helps out, is is, is the, the videos, the videos, these HD, HD videos, videos where you get the cool. And, and you, you go, go like that. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, and you pick, pick the hair apart, you pull it apart. Like yeah. that. That's, That's what, what you need to look at. Because trust is coming from a guy who's, a, a, I'm an influencer type thing. You can edit these photos. You can do whatever you want with them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know all about that, don't you? Yeah. You've, you've seen that. Um, so there, there's a question in the chat room uh, from Mooney11. I believe that he's in, in the UK, actually, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he says, Joe Kyle, would you be good? To, it would be good to know how many uh, grafts were extracted as part of the repair. Um, he says, scarring looks invisible for what could have been maybe a thousand grafts. Do you remember? So uh, I'll show you. I'll get quite close. close. So, so I've, I've still, still got, got a little, little bit of scarring across here where, where it's been. been. Mm -hmm. But basically, all my grafts were harvested from here, from because my hairline was like here. Yeah. Went across there, and they harvested the grafts from here. Don't get me wrong; there's still a couple of grafts left in there that I have to shave regularly on a regular basis. But they were too deep to take out. 
uh, the, the doctor, doctor said, he said, he said it would do more damage than good if I took some of these graphs out. Right. He says it would just scar. Right. Um, but also, I got a little circle in the back of my head where he harvested quite a bit from there still. Mm -hmm. It was still thick. It was on like, the side of my head. I don't know exactly how many graphs. I mean, Joe, you might. I don't know if you do or not. I remember it was... I'm trying to remember. It's been so long. Um, I want to say... Because he took out most of what was put up there except for... <clears throat> excuse me. Actually, I think it was between 1,300 and 1,400 graphs that he took out. Because he also took yeah. out in your temple points because the angles yeah. on those were kind of sticking out like this on the sides. Mm -hmm. um, so he took, he took quite a few of those out to kind of uh, help that to, to, to settle down. It like like softened it. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. So it was like more pointy. Yeah. Yeah, and I can, I can, see, I can see along your hairline there's, there's some that are trying to come through, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, I just have to, it's, it's just, just like my beard, hey, just shave it on a regular basis. Right. He suggested getting hair laser removal yeah, yeah. and get removed. Yeah. I, I don't know if I ever get it redone it again, again. I might want to use, use these hairs. I just don't feel feel comfortable getting rid of good hairs on my head. Yeah, I, I, I I'd like to program totally to do that. that. The, just so you know, the problem with that is those hairs that that Doctor Lupinzula said are too deep. If they were to be extracted, they're damaged. They're 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 already damaged just because of the way they're growing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, it, just my opinion, it would be in your best interest to not not do laser, but actually to do um, electrolysis. Uh, that's more of a direct and um, a, a, a violent end to those those follicles, where they still may come back. They'll definitely come back with laser. You'd have to do a few passes with electrolysis. It would be uh, less likely to to come back as often. Uh, if you were to do it with laser, uh, you have the hair type for it, it looks like. So I, I would suggest that, um, you know, I'm not a doctor, but I believe that electrolysis would probably be better for uh, those those few grafts that are still causing your problems up front. Consider it, though. I mean, if, if you're comfortable shaving, then don't even worry about it. Um, but I would imagine on some shoots that you go on where you're, you're you know, maybe over the course of several days, anything that you shaved is is starting to come back and it might be more difficult on on set or on location to actually get to them the way you want to. Is that, is that yeah. a challenge for you? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's the, the thing is, well, I was just going back to what Photoshop, Photoshop is before, though, because, because I mean, they can Photoshop, Photoshop anything, you know? Yeah. They, they do, do on, on modern shoots. Yeah. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so, yeah, people, phone line is open, one 563 Four two four seven. It's late in the UK right now. It's currently going on midnight uh, for Kyle. So I'm not going to ask him to stick around that much longer. Uh, maybe another few minutes, unless we get a phone call with a question for him. Um, let me ask you what What does your uh, What does your fiance think of of what you've been through? Have you talked to her about it? Um. So I got my. When I get my hair fixed, I don't even remember Vicky for about a month and a half or something, or two months, so I didn't even tell her I was doing it. She thought I was taking my mom. She thought I was taking my mom on vacation to Belgium. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And you come back with the bandages in your head. Yeah, like, what the hell are you doing? No, like, no, she's, she's really, like, like confident. confident. That's good. That's good. And, and, and good thing uh, your, your kid didn't know you with this. And so you, if you were to come back afterwards, he'd be like, who's this? Because you look completely different. <laughs> like, like you do look really different from, from those early days. So it's, it's, uh, it's nice to see this, the, the change. Um, what's the name? Um, uh, milk Drinker in the chat room says, uh, why did you go to Dr. Lupinzula and would you go there again? That's a fair question. Um, yes, I would, but at the time, I didn't know anyone in the UK that was up to his level, but now there is a lot of people that are on that same, I would say that on that same level, um, so probably not because it was a lot, it was a long, it was, it was a flight over, I had to get hotels, I had to, um, go for a consultation at first and then come back and then go back again for the procedure, it was, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. um, um, it was a lot, a lot of traveling. Yeah, 
Whereas if he stays, well, yeah, yeah, he's, he, he is he is great at what he does. Yeah, and um, and and now you have the option of staying in the UK. You can you know drive home, or, or at the very least, you know go, go home the next day if you want to rest up. There's a few now in the UK. There's yeah. a few now in the UK yeah. that I think that I've been researching and been looking at. I think they are top notch. They are like quality. quality. Right. Good stuff. Okay. So um, no one's calling in, which is fine. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's not the most uh, imperative thing that we have is, is phone calls, but I would like to thank you, uh, Kyle, for coming on here and sharing your story officially. Um, I wish you all the luck in the world with your fight to get these photos taken down uh, from the first clinic. Uh, I think it is um, – I, I think it's terrible – that a clinic is ignoring their patients' requests to take down photos. As far as I know, uh, at least in North America, uh, it's a requirement that the medical board uh, would want to know about simply because uh, the patient has control over their images and, and such. Um, so I wish you all, all, the, all, the, all the best with that. And do keep me updated. Uh, we'll, we'll be in touch anyway, but um, I, I'd like to know about this as it unfolds because I, I find it very interesting. And um, hopefully we can steer people in the right direction. I'm, I, I, I'm being careful. Of course, sure. Of course, sure. Being, any, being anytime you want to get this back on, on any time you want questions, questions or anything like that, I'm happy to call in. Okay. Outstanding. I'm open, boo boo. Right on. Well, Kyle, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, say hello to your lovely uh, fiance for me and get some sleep. And uh, smack your kid around a little bit just to make sure that he knows that you're there. Uh, he isn't. <laughs> and uh, we'll we'll take talk to you uh, talk to you later. Okay, take care of yourself. Thanks very much, Joe. Sure. See you in a bit. All right, bye bye. All right, so uh, let's see. Close this out. Yeah. All right. Um, phone lines are open, people. Uh, Kyle's taken off, and appreciate him being here. Uh, but I'm still here so that you can uh, give me a call if you got questions about surgery or if you, you want to ask me anything about uh, what we were just talking about with Kyle. Uh, the number is one 563 4247 If I don't get any calls, I'll just hang up because I got stuff to do, people. I got a new video coming out probably, let's say Tuesday. It'll probably be ready for, uh, for airing on uh, Thursday. And it is a video showing more hairline work from Dr. Aaron Nussbaum, hair transplant mentor member, Dr. Aaron Nussbaum, uh, fantastic hairlines. And it's a new format. And I want you guys to, uh, to tune in and watch that because I want to know what you think of the new format. It's different. Like I'm still in my studio. I'm still, you know, I still have the, the results behind me where I'm, uh, I'm, I'm talking about the details, but it is going to be different. Uh, and I want your input. I want your feedback. And the only way you'll know that it's, that it's released is by subscribing and then clicking the bell for all notifications um, so you get a, uh, a notification when it's actually going live. I'll, I'll have the announcement in the, my community section so you'll see that. And um, I'll be pushing, out, pushing it out all over um, my social media feeds. Oop, got a phone call. Ooh, it's loud. I'm still working on the volume thing with the uh, the calls, too. Uh, you're on the main event. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Yeah, hi, Mr. Tillman. This is Spencer Corbin, the founder of the International Alliance of Hair Restoration Surgeons. Sorry. You, sir? Sorry, who? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I want to say great, great job. I, you know, I, I'm so glad that when I look at Kyle on camera, just to see the difference. It's crazy, you know, isn't I know it? You, well, I know you said that, you know, obviously he's considering more work, but just to see the, 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 the initial difference from where he was, it's, it's compelling. And I think what's also really compelling is for consumers, hair transplant consumers, to understand that this can happen to anyone. Mm -hmm. And it does. Yeah. And he was already someone in the public eye who, who had access to the best doctors in the world. Listen, we started this. Whatever I started this 26 years ago, started the IHS over, IHRS over two decades ago, and the reality is, 
this is still going in, in the wrong direction. Yeah. No matter what we put out there, no matter how much we try to educate the public, it's such a, I hate to use the term evergreen market that's just growing or devolving exponentially that even well-known people, celebrities here in the U.S., the bad work that I see here in Beverly Hills, it's effing insane. Yeah. It's, um, you know, I, I made a prediction uh, several years back, maybe maybe six or seven years ago, that the, the field, while it's growing like crazy, like it's still growing like crazy, it's, it's bigger now than it's ever been by far, leaps and bounds, uh, will start to diverge into um, two different camps where you'll, you'll have one camp where the overall uh, quality is better than average but it's lower than it was as far as uh, the average from 15 years ago. And then you'll have the bottom of the rung, terrible uh, uh, outcomes or clinics that, that create outcomes like, like Kyle went through. And that seems to be, in, in my observation, what's happening. Because uh, and I mentioned it when Kyle was, was on, is that there seem to be more doctors out there now that are doing uh, a really good job but there's also that I've never heard of before that that are coming you know up and coming, but there's so many more clinics now than ever that are doing an even worse job across the board than ever. So it's well the 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 overall the net uh, walking wounded has grown exponentially. So yeah, there are maybe an extra fifty, sixty, seventy doctors out there that you know we may have ne never heard of or some new guys. You know, we have some new members of the IHRS. He was talking about uh, Manny Mattel, I think, in, in, in the UK, mm -hmm. that really aren't part of kind of like the old school mainstream, uh, you know, political societies. But they're coming out with some really powerful looking and, you know, compelling results. They're not but part, they're not part of the old guard, yeah. They're not part of the old guard. You know, there's a lot of young guys out there. So, I mean, I think he's pretty, he's become pretty astute. Um, when it comes to that, I was, I was going to call in earlier, but I was busy, but I had you, I, w I was listening to you guys, but I do think that unfortunately, you know, in 2008, uh, I don't know if you remember this, I went on the air with Dr. Alan Bauman to essentially kind of do a, to warn people mm -hmm. about kind of basically the machines are coming about, about what was happening with Neograph and that if this isn't somehow nipped in the bud, the entire field is going to fall apart, not just because of, you know, people getting these turnkey devices, but the barrier to entry, everyone is going to be doing all FUE, and there's going to be really little um, effort for, you know, to, to, to properly manage, manage donor areas. Mm -hmm. They're going to be selling what's considered to be a scarless surgery. And the reality is, I mean, look, look what Kyle had to do with his donor. I'm not saying it, I mean, he looks great with his tattoos, but like you said, that's not something the average guy who's got a got a job can do. Exactly. Like he he and what what's interesting about him is he understands like he can step outside of himself and and recognize the unique position he's in on, on a on a few levels, including that one where he can uh, ink up the back of his neck and the back of his actual skull, and it and it fits with his presentation that he 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 gives in, in everyday life. Like he is. He's, you know, full sleeves, his legs are done, his chest is done, his back is done, he's got more ink than the average guy. So, yeah, he understands that he can get away with it, but he also understands that most people can't. So he, he, he's, he counts his blessings. Um, you know, you, you can see that he's very humble uh, about what he's been through and, and what it means to his fans and, and, and those that are actually following in his footsteps unbeknownst uh, to the final outcome. Um, he seems, well, I think you're he right. seems more aware. Up, you know, like, like, he does have, I don't mean to cut you off, I'm sorry. He, he does have a, a tremendous opportunity to, mm -hmm. and, and you asked him, a, I think, a very, you know, a, a, a very important question. Like, what would you do? How would you guide people? You know, it's, 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 it's unfortunate when you guide people to say, and you tell people, well, you got to look at pictures and videos and this and that and the other thing. People don't really get it. Yeah. You have to guide people to really well-versed people in this field who are going to help to hold their hands. Yeah. Like you do, Joe. Sometimes. Guide people to the hair trans... Well, guide people to the hair transplant channel. Guide people to your resources. Yeah. Guide people to what we do. 
That is going to help to change a lot of lives very quickly. It's a succinct way to get the message out there. Have people follow. What's, what's your Instagram again, Joe? I'm getting old. Joe Tillman official. Yeah, Joe Tillman official. Get people to, you know, to, 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 to follow what you do. They can mm-hmm. follow me at Spencer Coburn, of course, whatever. You know, we're providing this information for a very long time. And luckily, he had the attitude, which I found was, you know, I, I, he, like you said, he, he was humbled to a sense. Instead of trying to say, who the fuck is this guy critiquing my hair transplant? He's like, you know what? Maybe he's right. I'm going to see if he can help me out. Yeah. And that's an attitude a lot of people wouldn't have. I admire that. A lot of people haven't had that because, because, <laughs> cause I, cause I have gotten some, uh, some, we'll say mean tweets uh, in the form of DMs and uh, and emails from people that didn't like I the fact that I included them in a in a video, but uh, yeah, look, I mean Kyle's a great guy. Um, he's I, I think he's grown a lot. It. He's grown a you lot since, since that that time, uh, 2016, 2017. I can't remember what it was. Um, I, I've been following him on Instagram uh, ever since, and I've I've noticed a maturity that he's gained over the past several years through, through his experiences, including hair restoration that I think um, have really put him on a path where he understands his impact on people. Um, because, you know, he's not an a, a list, you know, a level, you know, Jimmy Carr type of, of celebrity, but a lot of people follow him like 1.2 million he, on Instagram. He, Forget about it. I, ch- I just checked it out. And you, when you're talking about it, it's like, I couldn't even believe how many followers this, this guy has. And yeah, yeah, I mean, look, he is now in a good position. He looks really good. I'm sure he's thrilled. The experience is, was not a great one, but luckily he was repairable. Yeah. And it, that was not an easy repair case. Let me tell you, I've been doing this, no. and you know, we've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. So you guided him in the right direction, and I'm sure he's extremely grateful. It's life-changing. And, you know, you, you said something interesting that, you know, and I don't think that, you know, if he's still listening, I don't think he needs to feel any guilt, you know, for the people that may have followed his path, you know, because he had no idea. He had no idea how things were going to turn out. He was just like every, any other guy on the street researching hair transplant surgery today, thinking it's a one-size-fits-all procedure. Right. They're trusting a doctor, you know. So, um, yeah. I mean, I definitely think that he found the right person, and I'm sure he's extremely grateful. He should be. I haven't seen him. I haven't really taken a look since your video yeah. of what his head looks like. I was amazed yeah. at how great the result is. So I just wanted to call in, give you my two cents. If Kyle is still listening, I want to say congratulations. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't have come back from that. No, and a lot of people don't. And and I and I think it's important to clarify though when he was talking about feeling guilty, it wasn't it wasn't so much his part in it. Like he understands, you know, uh the mistakes he made and and uh um and, and all that, but what he's he feels guilty about is he is the unwilling participant in some of these surgeries that are going on because the clinic that he went to will not take his photos down from their from their promotional uh, materials on, on their website, on their social media, his likeness, his before and after is still being used. And that's what he's feeling guilty about because he can't get them taken down yet. He's still, well, how, how is he unable to get an injunction at this point? I don't know how it works in the UK. Um, I know he's, I, I know that there's something going on, um, with, well, you tell him, with you, efforts you to get that done. If he has any issues, he can call me and I, I can help him to make that happen. Actually, uh, it'll give, advice, give me advice at least. Actually, I think we we both know someone that has the background that can actually help out with this as well. I spoke to him today. I don't know who you're talking about, but yeah. I'm sure we know. Yeah, I, I, I told you I spoke right. to him today, this morning. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, I mean, uh, anyway, 100. Yeah. percent And I, I'd be willing to have to give him advice. That that could be taken down quickly. Yeah. So we'll, so, all right, brother. Yeah, the, the, the other, yeah. There, there, there are other options as well that that we can help him out with. But uh, yeah, right. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you called in. And um, contrary to what uh, philosoph- 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 physique says, 
Um, Spence didn't call in to save the show. He is a legend. Uh, the show doesn't need phone calls. I can I can keep talking or, or just hang up. The, the phone is for I, you guys. I, I called in. I'm not even looking at the chat. I called in out of admiration. And also, I wanted to just congratulate Kyle. Yeah. Because I could not believe how great his results. I mean, listen, I've seen a lot of repair work. I've seen people come from really bad places to looking normal. He's got, he, does, he looks beyond just looking normal. He now looks like he has got a great head of hair and a great hairline. It, it, yeah, he really does. On camera. I haven't seen him in person. I'm sure it's great. But to go from where he was on camera to where he is now, I mean, he only had one shot for that correction, and it worked. He's, so, he's, um, I'm happy for him. He, he's, he's, he's gotten 90% back to where he wants to be. Um, that w- w- and, and just, just full disclosure, just, just to be clear about it, the image that you saw on, on video, he, it, it's low resolution and it, it was an iPad front facing camera that he was using. So it was kind of pixelated. You couldn't see the details. Um, there's, there's still, there's still more work to be done in the hairline. Um, but where he is now compared to when he when I first started talking to him, different planet, different solar system, yeah. and yeah. and, and, oh, and what, what I like about his look now is he looks like a normal adult male with a full head of hair. He doesn't look like uh, how so, old of a guy is he? Uh, he's late twenties, I think, twenty eight maybe. He, yeah, he, he went in so young, man. Oh, he did. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, but um, that's still yeah. So horrifying. look, th- th- thanks for calling in, Spence. Uh, we'll be talking later, I'm sure, um, and I'll probably be doing another show this week. So be sure to uh, to tune in and listen in case I need to be saved again. Okay, <laughs> Joseph W. is human, everyone. Thank All you, right, thank you, thank you. Have a good one. Thank you. All right, see you, buddy. Bye, bye. All right, phone line is open in case someone wants to call in and save me again. Um, <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time, dude. The uh, number is one 563 4247 You guys can ask me questions about hair loss, hair restoration surgery, um, Cosma RNA, oral, fina- uh, oral minoxidil, topical finasteride. I was thinking about it. I was actually thinking about that the other day, or maybe it was yeah yesterday, I think. It's funny to me how... For years, it was oral finasteride and topical minoxidil. Now it's now it's switched. You got doctors out there saying that oral minoxidil is better, uh, and then topical finasteride is better. Who saw that coming? <laughs> it's just bizarre. Some some of the shit that I have seen in the past few days, as far as uh, surprising me, is um, I, I got one today. One surprise today. I, I wish I could share it with you guys, but it made a lot of crazy shit in my life for the past two weeks make so much more sense. It kind of gelled everything together. It's like, oh my God, I had no idea. Now it all makes sense. Can't go any further than that, or I won't go any, any further than that because it's, it's, it's inside baseball and stuff. But, um, yeah, crazy stuff. Let me uh, let me go to the chat room here. Um, let's see, Nico. Uh, how come Joe isn't working with Doctor Lupinzula any longer? Um, it's kind of old news. I don't have any. Uh, someone, yeah, someone said earlier when I was talking about a different doctor that I'm no longer working with. It's um, sour grapes or something. It's not. It's not sour grapes. Uh, Doctor Lupinzula is as far as I know, or at least last I saw and, and, and observed, um, fantastic hair restoration surgeon. No question about it. Um, the management of the clinic is another story. Um, differences of opinion. We went our separate ways. No hard feelings. I, I like Dr. Lupinzul. I think he's a nice guy too. Um, but it's, it's one of those things where the doctor and clinic management are not on the same team, which is unfortunate. So, <clears throat> but it, you know, it is what it is. So, uh, let's see. Milk drinker heard the oral minoxidil works for everyone. while topical only works for a fraction of the population due to some enzyme. Uh, that's not true. Uh, oral does not work for everyone. We've actually had people call in and tell us that, 
Uh, Hampton Hudson, Joe, you can't say that and then leave us hanging. You know better than that. No, Hampton, I can say that, and I will. Uh, let's see. Just give me a hard time, man. Uh, let's see. Any other questions? Uh, Sergey, thank you for your story, story, Kyle. Yeah, you know, big, big round of applause for Kyle. Um, I, I think... Uh, I think the potential for him to help other people in this in, in their search is huge. I I hope that he we we've talked about this offline. Uh, he said he wants to he wants to help. So hopefully on his Instagram, uh, he will talk more about the perils of hair restoration surgery and encourage people to to be careful. I, I hope he does. I I don't see why he wouldn't. Um, but he seems motivated from his own personal experience to, to help others on that front. So um, we hope that works out. We hope, hope he does that. Mm. Solomon Essien, Essien, I never understood what Joe's organization means for the clinics. What value does he provide? Well, that's a fair question. The value I provide is not uh, something that most people can provide. I give my business experience to them on several levels. It, it, it's different for each clinic. I have different relationships with each clinic, but um, I don't just make videos. Well, on, on the superficial level, I endorse them because apparently my endorsement means something. I'm the only person in this space that has my experience, my background, my standards, the whole nine yards. But I also have business experience and I help some of the clinics that ask for it with their actual business. I, I <coughs> excuse me, I provide a, an, an unbiased uh, sounding board for their ideas, for their problems that they're having internally. Um, one clinic that I used to work with, I actually hired some of their staff for them. I, I hired them remotely and got them some good staff members because um, I knew what to look for in certain staff members, certain certain positions. Um, I help them with their patient outreach efforts. And here's something that's very interesting, to me anyway. One of, the, one of the things that I really don't like to see with clinics that I work with or any clinics is pandering to patients. I hate when clinics pander to patients. And so clinics that I work with, I hold them to a higher standard of their own. I don't, I don't like using the word marketing, but I try to hold them to a higher standard for their marketing. Um, doesn't always work, but I'm happy to say that at least at this point in my organization, I no longer have anyone um, that I work with that panders to their patients uh, in exchange for leads uh, sales to, to fill the chair, to, to, to fill seats as, a, as, as, a, as it were. Um, and what do I, what do I mean by that? What do I mean by pandering to their, their, their patients? I mean, um, marketing that is cheesy and obvious that they're marketing towards you. I believe here, here's the way I look at, uh, patient outreach. I, I, I say that instead of marketing. Here's the way I look at it. If you're worth going to, you don't need to have specials. If you're worth going to, you don't need to say, hey, for the month of July, if you're a veteran, we're going to give you a discount. Why not just have that policy throughout the year and apply it quietly in the background when patients come in and you find out they're a veteran? Just do the right thing and say, hey, you know what? Thank you for your service. Um, after they've already decided to have surgery, say, we're going to give you 10% off. I think that's honorable. I think that's the way to do it. You don't do it beforehand because um, the medical board would look at that as um, inducing the patient to have surgery. One, one thing a lot of people, a lot of you may not understand is in medicine, it is frowned upon from an ethical point of view to induce patients to have surgery. What does that mean? 
what does inducing a patient to have surgery mean? Well, it means giving a patient um, some sort of carrot stick, some sort of um, reward for choosing to have surgery other than having the result that they want. For example, like I just said, for the month of July, if you're a veteran, we'll give you 10% off. I don't think that's ethical. If you are X or if you are Y, we will give, give you know, whatever percentage off your surgery. Or if you have surgery with us, we'll give you a free PRP, a $1,400 value for free or, you know, things like that. That's inducing a patient to have surgery when they otherwise might not actually pull the trigger. They're, they're thinking about it for sure. But anything you do to, to push them over the line, to get them to, to, to actually pull the trigger, that's above and beyond them making the decision because they want to have the surgery, that's wrong in my view. That's wrong speaking from a medical ethics position. And that's why, at least here in, in British Columbia, the College of Medicine does not allow that. College of Medicine is like the, the medical board for the province. Um, I don't like that. I think that that is wrong. So we kind of went, went on a rant there, but that's, uh, that's one of the things I do. I don't just look at pretty pictures on, <coughs> excuse me, on clinic websites and decide if I want to work with a clinic. I don't do that. First off, I don't approach them. Clinics approach me. Um, I set it up like this because I didn't want to. Uh, I didn't want to grow too fast. I don't know why I thought that would be the case, but that's what <laughs> that's what I put out there, um, and that's why I've had slow growth, which is manageable because I am a one man operation. Sometimes, sometimes I get help. Um, but yeah, that's what I do. That's the value that I, I provide. Um, I am an influencer. I do, <clears throat> excuse me, my, my throat's getting crackly. Um, but I, I influence through education. Everything I talk about, it's my personal opinion based on my experience that is not biased towards any particular clinic. You know, it's interesting. Um, I was thinking about this the other day. The bubble, the bubbles, I should say, that each clinic exists in is exactly that, a bubble. I used to be in that bubble myself. When I worked for the two different clinics I, I worked for, uh, I was in their bubble, which is in, in the professional world in general that could be referred to as the, um, the, off the office culture of that particular company. So you all know what I'm talking about. Like if you work at a, at, a, at a, you know, whichever company you work for, there's a certain culture that develops in that company and that shop and that store and that corporation business, whatever, where you develop this perception about everyone around you that's outside of your bubble, outside of your, your circle, other companies, different, you know, uh, competition, not even competition, um, uh, vendors, people that supply you with, you know, with the, the goods that you, you work with, the, the, the materials. So that's what I'm talking about when I say the bubbles that they live in. Uh, and they, they see their competition. They see the other players in their industry through a very specific lens that they've created themselves. For instance, for example, uh, back in the mid-2000s, my position on FUE was that it was inferior to FUT. And, and my, I, my position on that was solid. Why did I have that opinion? Well, it's because I worked for, arguably at the time, the single most successful... Um, hey, you're on the main event. Can you hold, please, so I can finish my thought? Hello. Hey, what's up, Joe? Yeah, can you hold for can you hold for just a second, please? Yeah. All right, thank you. 
All right. I I want to I want to finish this thought and and thank you for the to the caller for uh, for for uh, obliging me on that. So I I was very against FUE. I was open to it, but I was against it because of what I was seeing come coming through our doors as repair cases. That makes sense, but then it doesn't because then I started wondering around the later 2010s, uh, or, or, uh, you know, 2007, 2008, 2009, I started to notice, well, we're seeing terrible FUE results walking through our door from other clinics, but what about these good results that people are sharing online? You see where this is going. I started to notice that, okay, well, there are good results out there, but are they being manipulated? Now, being the photogra- photographic expert that I am, I realized in some cases, yes. Uh, but then the industry was also improving in FUE over the years. And around 2009, I came to the conclusion that FUE isn't so bad. And that was my, uh, that was my, uh, I don't know which color pill, r- r- blue pill, red pill. That was my pill. My realization that uh, I was in my own little matrix That's a great analogy. And when I set out on my own in uh, the beginning of 2015 as an independent, I had had a much more clear view of the industry as, and it actually became more clear as I started to visit clinics and, and learn about their own bubbles that they were in. And it all made sense. So, to, to get to the, the, the end of this, uh, this point that I was uh, trying to make because of the question by, um, by this person in the chat room, uh, Solomon Essing, uh, my input behind the scenes for these clinics that I work with is unbiased. I want them to succeed, but I want them to succeed with the patient in mind. I don't want them to, to succeed um, for the short game. I want them to su- succeed for the long game. And that's why a couple of clinics have fallen away from my organization. They don't see the long game. They don't understand uh, what benefit they have to execute A so that they can get to Z or Z if you're in Canada at, or the UK. Um, they want to get from A to B with B being the final destination. It doesn't work like that. They want to be just a quick step. The ones that do understand they wind up sticking around and they do when they get to the end, when they get to Z, A to Z, uh, they're much stronger for it. And I'm proud of that. I, I've not taken the shortcuts with my clinics and um, most of the clinics over the years I've worked with, uh, I've, that's one of the things I look at is do I think that they can understand the long game? I've made some mistakes in, in that regard. It's hard to tell sometimes especially when they're telling you what you, what they think that you want to hear. I've had that happen. Um, so I hope that answers your question. Um, I, I do give my endorsement, which is to them, it's valuable uh, from what I'm told, but I also help them on the back end with uh, business decisions and uh, things like that. So hope that helps. All right. So uh, let's go to the phone call here. Hey, caller, thanks for holding. I appreciate that. So I could uh, finish my rant and my thought. What's your name and where are you calling from? Man, no problem. This is uh, Paul from Florida. Hey, Paul. How you doing, buddy? I'm good. How are you, man? Uh, Can't complain. Can't complain. What's going on? What can I help you with? Um, Good thing. So if you remember, um, I've contacted you a couple of times. And uh, last time I called, the doctor from eugenics was there, but uh, he couldn't really hear me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I thought, I thought I'd try again. Um, so yeah, now I'm now, um, nine months from, uh, surgery. Okay. I, uh, after, yeah. After that call, <laughs> you know, it was kind of like, Hey, I'm ready to do it. Gave you guys my checklist items up until then. And, you mm-hmm. know, decided to go ahead and confirm with the clinic. W- well, which clinic, um, which clinic did you go to? Sure. So I visited two. Uh-huh. Uh, the first one just, a lot of grace with your program let's just say <laughs> i feel like i <laughs> okay fair enough yeah yeah i had a weird experience 
there and after that uh, visit to that clinic, um, the vibe was off, and 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 I want to harp on the importance of visiting the clinics. Oh, I remember who you are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right? Actu- so, actually, actually, you know what? Um, I well, I'll ju- I'll just say uh, your call and your your contact off off air was very valuable for me. And I'm sorry. Oh, good. And I'm sorry you went through what what you went through, but it was very valuable for me and um, some things that that occurred afterwards. So. Right. Um, <clears throat> when I saw the at the. Uh, photo that you posted that day for what the show was going to be, something inside me said, I wonder if it's going to be related to that clinic. <laughs> and lo and behold, it was. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I could hardly believe it, but yeah. it was very synchronous. Yeah. Um, anyway, you know, I, I didn't go through with that clinic. I, and I then, after there, visited with who I committed to, which uh, is uh, Hassan and Wong with Dr. Wong okay. uh, in Vancouver. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, so I'm pretty motivated, man. Like, you know, I've checked all the, bo- all the boxes I had set up for myself. I'm, I'm one month into, um, medicine. I, my trico test and actually, uh, both clinics coincided with like giving topical butasteride a try. Okay. Um, and given that that's what my trico test said. Um, and kind of both clinics to an extent said the same thing. I was like, shit, I might as well, you know, mm-hmm. um, I'm really not afraid of, of trying, uh, the finnies as I like to call them. I have not tried finasteride, mm-hmm. but, uh, I'm not afraid of trying it. I, I just wanted a little bit of clarity for a few reasons. So I'm trying the topical to test, right? It's been a month. Um, man, what a pain in the ass, <laughs> the topical aspect of it. Yeah. Um, you kind of don't realize it until you're, you're there, especially me. Like I have a comb over mm-hmm. and I have to, you know, take it apart and put it together every day. Now it's, it's kind of a pain in the ass. I get but it. The other day. Yeah. The other day I, I heard you say something about switching things up too close to, um, surgery. Yeah. So, you know, I, I want to give this an honest shot. So my questions are, I guess, how, how, long is in on a shot and and how close to surgery if you know i see no change or or what have you should i consider like trying finasteride if i decide to you know that's a great question um and, and th- thanks for calling in and um and following up with that by the way i do do me a favor just side note send me send me a a, a dm after after the show um just so i because i don't remember what your name is on online um sure so send, send me a DM just saying, hey, you know, and then you, you can, just so I know it's you, just so there's no imposters, um, just give me sure. a, quick sum, <laughs> a quick summary of what you told me, because I got something, okay. I, I got something I want to send to you that's going to okay. blow your socks off. No shit. Oh my God. I saw this today. So, um, there's a, a colleague of mine is in town from um, out of the country uh, on a layover to go to Korea. And we had lunch today and we were talking about a certain situation and he said, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll just say that he shared me with me a link to some information online uh, that I was not aware of. And had I known this, then things would have changed a lot earlier than, mm. than they changed recently. Um, mm. it, it's shocking. Absolutely. You, sure. you, you will be thanking your lucky stars. I'll, I'll just say that. So um, <laughs> on to your question. So at what point um, or how long should be should be using uh, the medication before you have surgery and why, I, I, I guess, would be the, the follow-up question. I think that if you're starting a, a, a treatment, a modality for, uh, to treat hair loss and you're looking at having surgery, the point of, of trying the medication first is twofold. Number one, you want to make sure you're not going to have side effects with it. Yeah. Because if you're committing to surgery uh, and that surgery is conducted with the idea or at least the discussion going forward is um, that 
you know, you want to be on medication so that your, uh, your returns to the, the clinic for more work are reduced. And the game plan, uh, if, if taking, well, usually is taking um, medication in, into account as part of the game plan, um, you want that game plan to work. So, yeah. so the first thing to seeing if it's going to work is make sure it's not going to uh, backfire in the form of uh, side effects. Because sure. if you have side effects, you probably don't want to take the medication anymore. Now, the second reason why you mm-hmm. want to take it uh, for for a while before surgery is to see if, act, is, if, if it's actually going to be beneficial to you on um, or how it's going to be med- beneficial. Is it going to uh, arrest your progression to where it doesn't get any worse? Because that's the baseline of what you want to hope for. If you can yeah. arrest your uh, your decline – hold it steady, then that's what you want, minimum. That's a solid foundation yeah. to build upon by transferring hair from the donor area to the recipient area because then you can feel pretty good about the idea of um, continued loss and that you probably won't have much more uh, right. d- down the road. Or if you do, it'll be greatly slowed and greatly minimized. The, right. the, the other side of that coin is you might actually have such a positive – uh, response that it could affect the graft count, right? By reducing the graft count, which means you have more donor hair for the future should you ever need it, and the surgery will cost less in the short run. Yeah. So those the, that's that's why I highly encourage that um, before surgery. My my first surgery with Doctor Wong, I got the prescription on the day of surgery, and after uh, after I was done with the surgery, I actually walked. The, the half block down to McDonald's prescriptions to actually get my, I got, yeah. I got, I did the same thing after the consultation. So I, no. I brought back uh finasteride and mm-hmm. I brought, and I, I had already ordered um, the topical to yeah. So my, my question is more so I'm nine months from the surgery, right? So let's say that in four more months, mm-hmm. I, you know, Nothing's coming back, which I'm not quite expecting it to, but both clinics were like, no, the results are this or have kind of been surprising us lately. Mm-hmm. So, okay, there's that. But if in four months I'm like, you know, this is just keeping baseline, which is great. Mm-hmm. I hope that's at least the case. But if I'm like, you know, this is a lot of trouble, this topical, I might as well try finasteride oral and, and just so it's less trouble. Mm-hmm. Is, is at that point, is it too late and I should just hold course with the topical um, because I'm, I'll be like three months from surgery at that point? Well, I'm not crazy about, about switching things up. <clears throat> exactly. Uh, because, because, you know, if one works better than the other, it, it might actually, um, it, it's, it's weird. It's like you can have a, a worse uh, temporary side effect um, from starting one medication but, right. but it wind up being better for you in the long run because it's 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 hitting you harder. Um, it's right. it's throwing more of your your follicles into uh, a reset um, catagen than telogen to where the the you know you have more of a shed, for, and then they uh, they come back three to five months later stronger than ever uh, and more uh, more numbers. So, um, if it were me. Knowing, yeah. knowing what I know after all this time, I would have just gone with the oral finasteride as, as a baseline because that's what everything is compared to. Everything, everything is compared yeah. to oral finasteride uh, as a standard. That's the gold standard um, or more accurately, Proscar or Propecia, name brand. Yeah. And then if, those, if, if that in whatever form didn't work for you, then you could look at – some sort of topical formulation. Um, yeah. Because I'm not convinced that topicals are as good as oral. No, uh-huh. no question. There are some fantastic outcomes with topical formulations. I've seen it. Um, some of the doctors I work with, uh, they have their own, their own formulations. Like uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Joseph Yaker in Dallas has his own uh, formulation formulation. Uh, a, a topical finasteride with minoxidil 
and he's getting amazing results across the board. Right. Another, another doctor that uh, that I've accepted, I, I'm not going to name his name yet because his uh, the announcement's not not ready. Uh, he has a, his own formulation as well, and he's having uh, really good results with his his product. So I know it works. I just don't know if right. it works um, as good as oral for those same patients. Now, I, I know there are cases where a patient has taken, uh, you know, oral finasteride or even oral dutasteride, and for some reason it didn't agree with them uh, somehow. Maybe you know side effects were worse. They switched to topical and they were fine and still had had a had a good outcome. I I fully accept that. That's a fact. Like it's out there. I know. Yeah. But oral, oral is still the standard, as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I see that now, like why maybe I should have started on finasteride. At the time, it was just like, you know, the, the fact that the trico said dutasteride and that both clinics suggested uh, topical dutasteride, and I saw some results, I was like, okay, I might, I might as well start here. Now I see it's kind of a pain in the ass to do this every day. Um, which is fine, you know, I'll do it, but it's only been a month. I'm just questioning, like, should I switch now that I have ample time still till surgery or should I just hold tight and, you know, consider switching way down the line, like a year after surgery or, or, or what have you? Well, look, it's tricky. This I, is a tricky part. Well, it's not if you're willing to play the long game. Right, right. And that's what I want to play. Yeah. So, look, uh, what I'm about to say, some of my doctors aren't going to be happy with on <laughs> on multiple levels, but this is how I feel about it, and I think it's in your best interest, not theirs. Um, sorry to disappoint those of you that think I'm evil and greedy, but that's the, this is the truth. Um, sorry, that was, that was a shot at someone. Um, <laughs> I think... Well, it's interesting. Uh, let's, let's talk about trico test. It's interesting to me that you you have trico test and it said uh, a topical formulation of dutasteride is no. Uh, it, it didn't. It didn't say topical. It uh, just uh, said dutasteride. Okay, uh, dutasteride. Okay. I actually <laughs> I actually had trico test myself about a year and a half ago, and it told me the same thing. Mm. Here's my experience on dutasteride from 2006. I saw no I saw no improvement above and beyond what I had with finasteride, and uh, I believe it was directly responsible for a bloat that I was going through where it looked like I'd gained like 15 pounds. Mm. And I may have, but I, you know, it, it wasn't because of anything different in my nutrition or my, my lifestyle. Uh, I was drinking and uh, partying just as much as I was before. No, no more, no less. <laughs> uh -huh. It's kind of a joke. Never been a big party. Yeah. But, um, uh, I, I was told since then. Like I actually brought this up to the the clinic that sent me the uh, the trico test just just so I could, um, uh, give it a shot. They wanted my take on it. They told me that since I took the test, they've actually refined it more, so it it might actually give me a different uh, uh, result or a different answer. You had it much more recently than I did, so maybe maybe yeah. maybe it is. I don't know. I and I don't know how accurate this stuff is. Uh, I know that doctor. Nobody, nobody seems to know. Yeah. Yeah. No. Exactly. No one seems to know. So it's like, it's it's another mystery. It's like, why are you suggesting this if you don't if you don't know if it works or not? Um. Regardless, that that's kind of a kind of a sidebar there. Anyway, but um, what's interesting to me uh, here's the other thing the clinics aren't going to like me saying, um. When you go to, and, and this is for anyone, not, not just you, caller, but when you go to a clinic and they suggest topical, are they selling the topical? I did ask, I did uh, bring that up because obviously um, this clinic is associated with this topical brand. And I, I told the, the uh, reps straight up, like, I know you're probably making commission on this. So like, look me in the eye and tell me like, you really think this is in my best interest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and was that at both I was, clinics? I mean, was that at both clinics you uh, said that? Yeah, I did. Okay. And I, and I grilled them on where they source it and, and I'm a student of this game, of this channel. <laughs> so I, 
I, I, I gasped, you know, strong. So, so the, um, so the clinic that you decided to go to, I know their answer, the clinic that you did not, that you decide not to go with, what was their answer? Um, they said that based on the recent results that they've seen that, yes, they really felt that, that this was in my best interest. Okay. And where, do, where do they source it? They, that, the response from the clinic, I am not going to, I was like, eh, um, <laughs> Because they, I asked if it was consistent source, and they said no, but that they try to get it from somewhere in Israel uh, consistently. Mm-hmm. I wasn't happy with their with their. It, you know what? Response. Um, kudos to them for being honest. Yeah, sure. Wait a minute, you were you were dealing with the actual consultant to that place, right? Uh, with the actual doctor of the clinic, I I did not go decide to go with. Yeah. Yeah. Was it the doctor or the consultant that told you that that they they, they tried to? The sw- doctor told me that. The, okay. The fa- fair enough. That. Okay. So so he's he was being he's being honest about that. That's good. Good. Um. Okay. Well, that that's that's why I, I, I want to say about that. It's like, can you trust, you know, a clinic if they're if they're pushing their actual brand on you, if they're right. selling it, and and I think it's a fair question. Um. But like I said right, before, right. F- full disclosure, it's like with uh with Yaker and then with his other clinic. I've seen a lot. Like they've gone out of their way to show me, you know, not just. I'm, I'm, I'm not talking two, three, four, five results. I'm talking like thirty, <laughs> you know, forty. <laughs> like we transfer files that you know are a couple gigabytes of nothing but photos and video of results. So I know I know huh. this stuff works. I just don't know how it would work. Like how would these patients turn out if they if they had oral? Would it be better? I don't know. And they don't either. Right. But, but <laughs> these are questions to ask. So I'm glad you asked them. Uh, I'm glad you brought this up. Um, so the question remains, like, is it, you know, I'm yeah. like, should I just switch now to oral and just try? Or am I better off just sticking to, it's only been a month. Should I just stick this out? You know what? Uh, if I had gone through this, I was a month in, I decided that applying topical is a pain in the ass, which I agreed it. Well, it depends on what you do with it. And it depends on, like, when I was doing, when I was using topical, I actually really liked it for the, if only for the fact that it was the absolute best styling agent I had ever used in my life. Mm. Well, I don't got much up there, so. I get it. <laughs> I get it. You know what? Okay. So, so here's, here's, try this. Just try this. Do you put it on in the morning and, and, and leave it in the scalp all day? Yeah. Okay. So you got two options. One, put it in, put it in at night and just and, you know, wash it out in the morning. You wash mm-hmm. your, do you wash your hair every day? Um, I am now, yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I have to ask that. Okay. So put it in at night and just leave it in all night because it, it dries pretty quick. And then... Uh, just wash out in the day, and you can still, you know, you can continue to style your hair normally, like you like you do now, mm-hmm. or like you did before. The other option is 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 the topical you're using. Is it kind of a, a paste, like a white paste? Yeah, yeah, it's the Zion one. Okay, so so here's what you do: um, wash your hair, and then when you get out of the shower, uh, you know, j- just do a light towel dry, and then get get the the, the you know, squeeze it out with the the plunger. Get it in your yeah. in your hands. Rub it through your fingers like you normally do, and then rub it through through your hair. Um, and then give it, you know, uh, five minutes to air dry, and then comb it in the in the position that you want it. Let it air dry another five minutes, and then blow dry it. Mm. That's actually that was a secret of mine for the six months or a year that I used it, I forgot how long I used it, uh, my hair was like, it it, it was bigger. It was like, poof. And and (laughs) it it was like, it wasn't heavy because of this. Uh, It it had the, you know, it's got the consistency of like um, Arm & Hammer baking soda uh, toothpaste. That's the consistency that it feels like in my my hands. It's kind of gritty, but it would, it would, it was really great for styling my hair. And that's how I would apply it. Um, that's how I do. That's how I style my hair now. But using uh, hairspray uh, when my hair is still wet, and then I let it air dry for a few minutes, and I blow dry it, and it gets big and all that good stuff. Um, 
I, I, I wouldn't need to do anything like that. I just use this topical in the same way and it worked fantastic. So try that. See if you can work so, that out and th- it might actually be beneficial for you as far as a styling agent and it's helping you to, to uh, fight hair loss. Okay, so then stick to it. Stick to this topical, give it up until surgery, after surgery. I was going to, well, I was going to, I was going to say, try that for a week. See if you can find a way to actually enjoy using it. Okay. If you don't, if you, if it doesn't work for you, like if you, if you just don't have enough hair for it to grab onto and it's, and it's still pain in the ass, then if it were me, I'd switch to the oral, uh, and stick with it through surgery till the end of surgery, so on and so forth. If you're not having side effects from it. Sure. You're obviously not having side effects from the topical, so you can feel pretty good about that. I would switch over to the um, to the oral finasteride now. Um, see how that works. If you need to postpone your surgery because you want to give it more time, then postpone your surgery. You don't owe like sure. Yeah, you know, I love Doctor Wong. Uh, you know, it, it's it is what it is. But he's working for you, not yeah. the other way around. And yeah. if you want to postpone surgery, postpone surgery. And you can tell them, yeah, look, no. I, I want to give this medication more time to do what it's going to do. I'm coming to you. I made my decision. I just want to make sure that uh, my medical uh, situation is locked and loaded before I do surgery. He'll, he'll completely appreciate that and be like, sure, fine. I'll be here. <laughs> <coughs> he was a very uh, cool and kind person uh, when he I is. met him. He is a cool and kind um, person, and, and but but if you're going to postpone, be sure you do it uh, with you know more than a month notice. Like, give oh, him, yeah. give him plenty of headway. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm 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 really motivated. My anxiety about all this turned into motivation with Good. help from uh, you know a therapist, from my partner, and and from listening mm-hmm. to this show. So, well, good. Well, you know, I'm, I'm glad I'm, I could help. Yeah, no problem. I don't. I don't want to hog all your time. May I squeeze in one last one related sure. also to uh-huh. this? Yep, absolutely. Is it is it crazy that even though like I'm dead set on on going to Dr. Wong, I have seen uh, your episodes talking to Dr. Yaker. Is mm-hmm. it is it not ethical to try medication with a different doctor than my surgery doctor? There's nothing wrong with that at all. I could just be like, hey, I'm having surgery with Dr. Wong. Mm-hmm. This is the date, but you seem to really be adamant about sure. uh, the medicinal aspect, and I want to try mm-hmm. working with you on that. Uh, there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's nothing unethical about that um, among the doctors. There's nothing wrong with you doing that as a patient. Uh, you, sure. ch- you choose the modality of choice, or, or you, you, you find the modality of your choice, you find the surgery of your choice, and you, you're in control, you know? Like sure. You're in control of, of your follicular destiny. <laughs> one, one quick last one. If I do switch to the oral finasteride, uh, should I titrate? I'm doing dutasteride topical six days a week. Should I, like, cut it down and add, slowly add finasteride? Um, uh, you're a month in. My my gut says no. You don't need to worry about it, but just be sure you, you can do it. You can do a titration like uh, six days a week. You know, uh, alternate for for a month, and then after a month, uh, just switch over. Sure. Yeah, I'm not a doctor, but that's that seems to make sense yeah. to me. Okay. Well, I'll I'll reach out on uh, the DM, and I appreciate your time. All right. Thanks for calling, buddy. Good hearing from you. All right. Likewise. Cheers. All right, take care. Bye bye. All right, one eight three three five six three four two four seven. I'll be on for another couple minutes. It's uh, eleven minutes till the hour of five p.m. Pacific. Uh, I'd like to thank the caller. That was a great question or, or a great series of questions, uh, and I look forward to your message because, like I said, I got something to, to send you. It's going to blow your mind. Uh, Kyle Christie, um, really glad that he called in. I'm very proud of that that boy uh, and the the journey he's been on. And uh, what he had to tell you guys, I super valuable. You know, when I was talking to him before the uh, before the show uh, a few days ago, when we were talking, about, or last week when we were talking about doing doing the show together, he was telling me the story 
of the fan that he ran into that, that started talking to him about his own surgery, there's actually a lot more detail to it. He didn't want to get too much into it because he didn't want to, in case that fan was listening, he didn't want to make them feel like it was him or them very specifically that he's talking about. Uh, it, I got choked up listening to it because Kyle was getting choked up about it. It really affected him. Uh, that's, that's what tells me that he's a good guy. Like he, he was genuinely uh, upset with knowing that he, he, was, he was not in control of the image, of, of his image when it comes to the original hair transplant he went through. Um, and that's part of the reason why he's, well, actually, that's the reason these experiences are the reasons why he's in this battle. He's in this fight to have those images uh, removed from these websites and social media channels so that his likeness is not used to uh, entice people into having surgery with, with uh, someone he doesn't feel like they should be having surgery with. So I understand that. I understand that. Um, it's interesting. I'm I'm kind of in a situation, kind of similar, where my logos are being used in an unauthorized manner. Um, some clips of of my show are being used in an unauthorized manner, and uh, it may come. Uh, we'll see. Eventually, they'll come down one way or the other. Um, we'll see how that happens. But I, I get it. I get it. Uh, Jason Morgan in the chat room says, Hey, Joe, my doctor told me to apply minoxidil twice a day and also take oral minoxidil at the same time. <clears throat> wow. So that meaning uh, four doses of minoxidil, what's your take on it? That seems a bit much. Your doctor must really like minoxidil. Um, I, don't, I don't understand the reasoning behind that. Like why not just double up on your oral dosage? Topical seems a bit much in addition to oral. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I personally don't think it's a good idea, but I'm not a doctor and I don't know your, your particulars. So maybe it makes sense for you. I don't know. According to your doctor, I hope, uh, I hope that works out for you to your benefit. Mm. Uh, philosophy, philosophique. That's a good name. Uh, that's what every single person says when they start. Then a few months later, they pack it in. Um, not sure what you're talking about, but yeah. Um, topicals are pointless for 90% of the people. You'll start missing days, then two days at a time, and it's just a giant pain in the arse. Uh, nobody's going to use topicals daily for decades on end. I disagree with that because I know people have been using topical minoxidil for 30 years. Fairly regularly, uh, pretty consistently. So it, it's, um, it can be easier to drop off, but a lot of people stick with it. I, I understand your logic on that. Um, let's see. Chris McClansky. Hey, man. What's the correct deep? You, you want to say what's the correct depth of transplanted grafts? Well, it depends on how long your follicles are. The average follicle length is about four millimeters. Um, but there are, Asians tend to be deeper or longer, usually five, sometimes six millimeters. Um, but that's what, that's a mark of a good clinic. They'll actually measure the, the depth of your follicles as they are extracted. They can, uh, lay them on, on the table or in the, in the Petri dish or wherever, and they can get an idea of how long they are from the top, from the tip of the tissue where the, where the hair shaft exits. You can see that in the follicle, uh, down to um, the bottom of the follicle. They'll measure that. And if they're using uh, depth adjustments for their incisions, when they're making the recipient sites, then they'll be <clears throat> about that same depth. Different clinics will have different uh, approaches to that. Sometimes they'll make them slightly more shallow. Sometimes they'll make them slightly deeper. I prefer a bit more shallow. Um, but it all works. 
So I hope that answers your question. But four, four to six millimeters is what they should be, depending on each individual case, because it will vary from patient to patient. Mm, okay. Um, do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, so you guys are having a conversation in between. Got it. Yeah, so I don't see any other questions here. Um, exactly coming back from something like that's hard. Yeah, okay. All right, guys, um, no calls. 833-563-4247. <clears throat> and questions have kind of slowed down. Uh, what should I take, 2.5 or 5 milligram of minoxidil? That's between you and your doctor. Um, I don't like talking about that simply because it's a little bit more serious than talking about finasteride. Uh, it is a heart, uh, blood pressure medication. And, and I, I will tell you that most people will be taking 2.5, I think, usually. Uh, Sergey, Joe, do you believe it's possible to use uh, a 0.45 millimeter punch and consistently achieve low transection? Dr. Zarev says he uses it. Um, yeah, so, well, it's possible, but I, I don't think it's fair... I, I know Doctor. I know what Doctor Zarev says. Um, I I can't say I've heard him say anything beyond that, but I do know for a fact that you can't uh, you can't say that you use one specific size punch and 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 apply that to every patient because different patients have different uh, characteristics where a, a 0.45 uh, isn't possible. Uh, you have some, some patients with thicker hair follicles. Um, yeah, there, there are several factors that go into that. So uh, he will go as small as uh, 0.45, but I, I don't think, I could be wrong. Maybe he does say that he only uses 0.45. I think if, if he is, then the transection rate would be um, I know for a fact he doesn't because the way that some graphs will splay out like the legs of a coffee table, like, like a three-legged coffee table, you can't use a, a, a 0.45 without transecting at least one and sometimes two of those graph or, of, uh, follicles. So, um, yeah. So, Joe, is it a problem if the hairs that shed up transplant are bent like a hockey stick? Sometimes it means that they've been pushed in too deep too far or too hard, and they kind of bend back on on themselves. So yeah, that can be a problem. Uh, all right, so it is 4.58. I'm just going to wrap it up. So phones are disconnected. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in, and thank you for the questions in the chat room. Thank you for uh, phone calls, and thank you again to Kyle Christie for coming forward and kind of updating everyone about his hair restoration journey. It's not the end of it. He is, uh, he, he does have more work to go through. Uh, he's going to be, he's looking for another doctor. Uh, I am working with him on that, on the back end and, and talking to different doctors on his behalf and, and with him uh, to make sure he gets the best care possible. And he'll make an announcement at some point, I'm sure. We'll see. <clears throat> I don't know what, what degree of discussion he'll, he'll have in that, but he'll probably be pretty open about it because as you can see on today's show he's, he's pretty open about his experiences thus far so I'm very I'm very glad that he is because I think it helps all of you and um, yeah if you like this episode if you thought, thought it was valuable click that like button people um, show the love I don't, I don't get paid to do this I do this for you and um, yeah I hope you enjoyed it thank you so much I tomorrow's Wednesday I might be back tomorrow We'll see. I got a lot of stuff going on. But there are more videos coming out. So like I said, uh, Thursday will be a new video highlighting uh, some more work of Dr. Aaron Nussbaum and more stuff coming after that. So thanks for joining me. Take care. <laughs>